They might not be there. Hey, Missy, uh, we had a bad emergency this morning, so she's at the emergency. We took uh, free toes the dog's leg. We took him to the vet emergency clinic last night, which, by the way, did y'all know that's moved off 34th Street? Okay, well, y'all way ahead of me, you know. I don't know where it is, but it's not on 34th Street. Yeah, 66 in Milwaukee. It's nice, too, from what I hear, you know. I was up here working on the sermon, and Misty was texting me, so um, she might be here. She's supposed to pick Frito up at 9 o'clock. Of course, y'all know the meter on that deal for when there's father's staying there, right? Yeah. But I just I want to talk a little bit about Misty. Well, she's not here, okay? Yeah. So, uh, uh, M- Misty, if y'all don't know her, if you've never done a road trip with her or traveled anywhere, she truly has this really uncanny sense of direction, guys. It's almost spooky. I mean, she is like a walking, living, breathing GPS. I, I'm not, I'm not kidding you. And as a man, it's really irritating. You know, <laughs> she has that uh, in her. Uh, we were driving to Dallas one time, and we're outside of Abilene, and there's construction, and so we're, we're kind of caught up in the construction. Now, Misty, you know, she's in the passenger seat, and she's just almost asleep, you know. And so I decide that I'm going to take a detour and a shortcut to get around the construction and save us time, right? Well, as I turn off, in a few minutes down the road, she pokes her head up and she she says this, she's like, and she talks really sweet to me, you know, she's like, sweetheart, are we going the right direction, you know? And of course, I get defensive right off the bat about that question. I'm like, of course, baby, why would you ask such a question? Well, uh, she doesn't know this, and I'm making a confession in front of my family of God. I it didn't look right it. to me either. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I had this moment of, guys, you ever have a moment of male brilliance? I had this moment of male brilliance. So I wouldn't have to tell her I was lost, and so I wouldn't have to speak to her, you were right again, you know, uh, don't know where I am. I waited for her to go to sleep. That was my plan, you know. Now, she was almost right there, you know. And so I knew it wouldn't be much longer until she would doze off. I would turn around, and I would get back on the right road. Well, that happened. I clocked it, just so you know. It was 20 miles one way until she fell asleep, and it was 20 miles back, all right? So 40, 40 miles later, uh, she, she, she knows it now. She'll know it now, you know. But she was, she was, she was right. Uh, so we're in this sermon series called Reset right now, and last week we looked at 2020 and reflection back on 2019 a little bit, and um, we, we got into regrets, and, and what we saw was regrets tend to be about opportunities not seized, and chances not taken, and words not spoken, decisions not made, resolutions not kept. And we noticed that, you know, we kind of need to go through this exercise a little bit in a healthy way, you know, and not, not in some morbid reflection, but in a growing way, where we look back on 2019, and, 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 and most of us can see some road that we were on uh, where we missed that exit, you know, that we should have taken. Uh, it's really clear to us now, right? You know, but then we may have known it too, but we may have, you may have been like me, a prideful person, you know, waiting for someone to not pay attention or to not look until you could, you know, turn around. You, you may not have turned around at all, but we, we can see where we've missed some of those things to turn around. Now, you know, where we left off last week in Luke chapter 5 was uh, uh, we left off with uh, uh, Peter and Jesus in the boat. And you know what I forgot to do, Melissa? I'm so sorry. Can you put that really great looking slide of people up that I took? Look at that, guys. Y'all, y'all give them a hand, all right? Yeah. I, this has nothing to do with the sermon, but listen, we had a vision inside and planning 2020 conference at the church, and that's a, a lot of the leadership here uh, that came. That's Andy Hurst. He was our facilitator. I thought Andy did a good job. Amen? Yeah. He's our facilitator, and so he took us. So this is what these guys did uh, this weekend and stuff. So thank y'all very much for giving up your time Friday night and Saturday morning. So anyway, back to the sermon, right? So we live, we live in the boat last week. Now they had this huge catch. They gathered and collected all of this fish so much, in fact, that it fills two boats so full that the boats are almost sinking. And then, but before that, Peter has this interesting phrase that he said. Remember whenever uh, Jesus told him to cast his nets on the other side, 
And Peter kind of goes through this exercise with Jesus. We've already tried that. That's not going to work. That's not a great idea. I've been there and done it. We worked all night, blah, 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 right? But then he says, but because you say so, right? Because you say so, I'm, I'm going to do it. And so, now just think about that phrase a lot. Because you say so, I forgive when I want to hate. Because you say so, I love when I want to turn away. Because you say so, I keep going when I want to give up. Because you say so, I give when I want to keep. Because you say so, I act when I want to stay still. Because you say so, I pray when I want to gossip. Because you say so, I believe who you say I am, not who the world says I am. Right? And we looked at, you know, this time doesn't have to be like the last time. This, this, this year doesn't have to be like last year. This moment doesn't have to be like the last moment. This try doesn't have to be like the last try. And we saw where what the difference maker in all of that is Jesus. Jesus is the difference maker in those equations that didn't work out or caused this anxiousness or maybe uh, excessive worry or doubt or hurt. And so we ended up with this challenge walking away last Sunday with uh, what if we could live a because you say so kind of life in 2020. Now I'll be honest with you guys. I thought a lot about that sermon after I preached it. I thought a lot about that phrase this last week. You know, I, I thought, man, what would that exactly look like in my life uh, because you say so? What would that look like in our life, in our church, uh, to live a because you say so uh, kind of life? And one critical piece of that I know is that we need to know the Bible. Amen? I mean, because for it's so critical, guys, for us if we are wanting to hear what God is saying so, that we need to be able to learn his ways and to know what God is talking about. And that's talking about what is his will for us, right? Now, I hear that question all the time. What is God's will for my life, you know? Uh, what is God's will in my dating relationship? What's God's will about me getting married? Uh, let's see, what else? What is God's will about college or starting a family? Or what is God's will about my finances? And so here's the thing when we kind of short this. We tend to think about God's will as being a very specific and a very personal uh, matter to what's happening right in front of us. We don't tend to think of it as much as the big picture of God's will. We really, when we talk about God's will and when we are praying about God's will, we really just tend to focus on our own world, right? Our own little piece of real estate here in this world and the things that are happening around us. And so we're only thinking about it really in terms of our life, our personal life, the specifics in our personal life. Questions would be like, God, you know, I need some information, right? I've got this choice coming up. I've got this decision that I need to make. I'm coming up to this intersection, Lord, and I really need to know which way do I turn here. Is this the decision that you really want me to make? And I really feel like some of us may be here this morning, and we're frustrated. You know, we're, we're, uh, uh, we're just a little frustrated because we may want to try to do this because you say so, kind of life, but we're not really sure what God is telling us to do in that because you say so phrase. So here's the deal, right? Uh, when we study, if you look in the Bible, when you study the ideal of the will of God in Scripture, it tends to be something different than the specific will of God. What it tends to point to is more of what God's revealed will is for us as a person. Let me explain that. What God is talking about in Scripture really points to who you are, right, as a person. So it's not so much what you're going to do next as much as it is telling us 
who we are, the scripture says. Now, this changes everything for us because now if we are learning who we are in Christ, guess what? That next decision or that next moment uh, that we're not sure what to do, uh, we can make that decision by who we are defined to be by the word of God. Do you understand what I'm saying? Amen? So what it means is that, you know, I might have made that decision before I became a Christian, but guess what? That's not who I am today, right? Who I am today decides a little differently right there. Or, you know, I might have, I, that's, that might have been the route that I would have gone before I accepted Christ, right? But since I have accepted Christ, guess what? Uh, because that change has occurred in me, that's just not something that I'm going to make a choice for anymore because God has other choices for me by the way that he has defined me and the way that he tells me about who I am. So here's the magic, all right? Between God's specific will and God's revealed will. Specific will being we want information. I get it, and I pray for it too. We want information about making a certain decision and God's revealed will of defining who we are from Scripture. The more committed that we are to God's revealed will, then the more clearly that we will be able to discern His specific will. Let me say that again. The more committed that we are to God's revealed will, what He tells us we should be about in Scripture, right? The more clearly that we will be able to discern His specific will for your life. Revealed will of God from Scripture, what is one? Anybody, I'll give you an example. To forgive others. That's a revealed will from God's scripture. Amen? What's another one? Revealed will from God's scripture. What's that? Do unto, others as you do, unto others. do unto others as they do unto you. Amen? What's another one? God's revealed will from scripture. What's that? Honor your father. Honor your mom and dad. That's right. But we had one in the back. The Ten Commandments, God's revealed will. See, it's all over us, but we're like, I'm not too concerned about that will of God, right? You know? I kind of want a little bit more of the specific will of God, you know? Like, is that the girl for me, you know? God wants us to focus on His revealed will and get those things down for us. So, uh, the more that we're walking in God's revealed will from Scripture, right? Learning our Bibles, the more likely it is that you're going to take the next right step. And, and, and whatever that specific will might be for your life, if we are focused in God's revealed will, if we are living in His ways, then those choices become easier and easier for us to see and for us to make. But look, if we are rejecting God's revealed will, if we are not getting into Scripture, if we are not digging into the Bible to find out who God says that we are, if we don't learn about it, then I just think it's going to be really difficult for us to know, you know, uh, if we are walking in God's specific will or not. So this year, I just really, really, really want to encourage you guys to dig into God's Word. Amen? Dig into God's Word. Consume it uh, as much as you can. Well, then, look, you're not getting enough. If you're just getting it right here uh, today, and that's all the God's Word that you get, I'm just going to tell you, man, you're not getting enough of it. It needs to be daily for us. So, that's a whole sermon in and of itself, right? Uh, I've been, so I've been thinking about what this would look like because you say so, this kind of life. So, I asked some people around me. I remembered back, you know, in my life a little bit. I did a little bit of research on the internet. And so, here's some things, some responses that I came, uh, found that uh, from God trying, from people trying to live a because you say so kind of life. Because he said so, this person said, I worked in missions in Haiti. This person commented, because he said so, I got out of a really, really bad relationship. Uh, this lady said, because he said so, I didn't give up on my marriage. It was so hard, so long, but today my marriage is healed, and I love my husband more than words. Now, this lady, I guarantee you, she didn't know at the beginning of saying, because you say so to God, what the result was going to be, right? I mean, she wasn't guaranteed that return, but she threw her nets where God told her to throw her nets. Another one said, because he said he said so, and the big capital H E, right, because God said so, I readjusted my finances to support three full-time missionaries. 
Another said, um, this is a retired couple, <laughs> you know, not, not in this church, but this is a retired couple, because he said so, we invited a single mom and her three kids to live with us so that she could go back to school. Can you imagine that? Now look, that wasn't convenient, was it? I mean, she's raised her kids, right? <laughs> you know, probably has grandkids, you know, that wasn't easy. And, it, and you know, it probably wasn't what they wanted to do. But guess what? It was what God wanted them to do. Amen? So because, uh, because you say so. So this is our challenge for us, right? You know, we talked about it in a couple of sermons. You're going to hear another you know, point about it um, at the end of uh, this month. But to start this year off living, being challenged with living a because you say so uh, kind of life. And really what that's talking about is for us to do something that's very difficult and very hard to do. It is submitting. It is submitting ourselves to Christ. Now, <laughs> those words are kind of hard for us to say, right? Because you say so. I mean, the phrase because I say so is not so hard to say, right? Yeah. But because you say so, to say that out loud, it's just difficult. So what I thought we could do together today is I thought we could practice. Yeah, are y'all good with that? Okay, amen, yeah. No one said anything, but I'm just going to take that as a yes, okay? All right. So what I want you to do is we're all together, we're going to repeat this phrase. We're on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Because you say so. Woo, that's pretty good, man. See, that feel good. Okay, now that that's, that's the easy part of saying it, right? But what makes it a little more difficult is when I start adding some specifics to the front of that phrase, right? You don't have to say the specific, but when I get done with the specifics, when I add some context here at the very end, uh, if, you, if you feel no pressure, okay, no pressure, right? Okay. If you so feel that, right? If you so feel that, to repeat with me because you say so. Okay, here, we'll give it a shot. Jesus, giving generously and joyfully in my finances is hard for me. And sometimes I really feel like you're asking a lot of me to do it, but Jesus, I don't feel at all like forgiving them. You know what they did. You know what they said, Lord. You know how they are, but Jesus, I don't want to confess, confess that one sin. God, I, I just want to keep it secret. Lord, it's embarrassing. I'm ashamed of it. It's uncomfortable, Lord, to talk about. But? All right, guys. <laughs> this is just for the men, okay? All right? Just for the men, all right? Jesus, I don't feel like loving my girl sacrificially, putting her needs ahead of mine, but? I set you up right there to have a really great day, man, you know? If your girl would have hurt you, just shout that out, you know? I mean, it was, it was right there for you, you know? I mean, this is like a really slow ball. I mean, you just want to sort of knock that one out. Okay, all right, that's, that's okay, that's okay. Let's try, let's try this again, guys, okay? All right, all right, all right. All right, just guys, Jesus, I don't feel like loving my girl sacrificially, putting her needs ahead of mine, but... Because you say so. No reason why this can't be fun, right? Yeah. Okay, ladies, here you go. This is a good one. Uh, I don't, Jesus, I don't feel like respecting my guy. I respect him, and he deserves respect, you know. <laughs> I don't feel like putting his needs ahead of my own, but. Because you say so. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> We're better at this. You are <laughs> So, you know, church, we look on the past and we see these regrets, things we wish that we would have done that we didn't, you know. And I really just think this year a lot of this can be resolved by making this commitment and accepting this challenge to live a because you say so kind of life. And the bonus to that is this, guy is there is actually a lot of healing in store for us in that phrase right there. See, God begins to repair the damage of the past when we begin to submit to him in the now, right? God begins to repair the damage of the past 
when we begin to submit to him in presence. I know it doesn't make sense, but it really works. So the guys are in this boat. They had this, just this huge haul of fish come in. And then look back, if you want to turn your Bibles through Bible flat, look back and give with me to Luke chapter 5. At some point in the story, Jesus, uh, Peter just becomes absolutely overwhelmed by uh, the significance of the moment of what's going on and by the power of, that he is witnessing that God is doing. And so in 5 8 it says this, it says, When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. Have you really thought through all the imagery of that? All right? I mean, where is Peter right now in the story? What is he in? What else is in the boat? Fish. And lots of fish, right? Everywhere. So when he falls at, at Jesus' feet, guess what's surrounding him? Fish. I mean, fish everywhere. God flopping around, fish all around him, all over him, behind him, in front of him, beside him, slapping the fish slap up on my face, right? I mean, just fish everywhere. But to Peter, flopping around everywhere is evidence that Jesus did what he could do. Everywhere, Peter is surrounded by evidence that what he tried didn't happen. But what Jesus told him to do did happen. Everywhere. So he falls to his knees and he says this. He makes this confession. He says, I am a sinful man. He repents and confesses. And repentance and confession is what unlocks a new future for Peter. See, right after this, Jesus invites Peter to be his disciple. And I really think this is what Jesus was waiting for. Was this moment right here before he asked him. He was waiting for Peter to acknowledge his unworthiness. He was waiting for Peter to see his total deprivation. He was waiting for Peter, Peter to recognize his total and complete need for Christ so that a new future, a new path, a new adventure, a new life could begin in him. And look, when we repent, and we don't hear a lot of sermons about this anymore, do we? You know, the old fire and brimstone, you know, I used to go at the, the, at the, the Baptist church. Man, that was a great revival, man. Every year growing up in Louisa, boy, I love that revival. We repent, but when we repent and we confess, we finally hand God broken pieces to repair. My nephew broke down uh, coming back uh, from Austin a few years ago. And so, you know, he called Uncle Todd, right? Because Uncle Todd's a, a big weenie and doesn't ever say no, right? You know, and stuff. So, and so I, I traveled out. I asked him what was going on. I went and picked up an alternator. I figured it was that. I traveled out on the road to go meet him. And uh, before, by the time I got there, I noticed that my nephew had tried a few things to fix it, right? You know? <laughs> so there were parts everywhere, you know, on, 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 uh, uh, on the highway and stuff. And so... As I started putting the new alternator on, I was getting frustrated because I couldn't find all the pieces. You know what I'm saying? There would be a bolt missing, or there would be just a you know a specific screw uh, that I needed. And he took some stuff off he didn't need to take off, by the way, too. So in putting all that back to, together, it was just it was a mess, you know. And it's it's really a good lesson because it's hard to repair something if not all the pieces. Are provided. I really want you to listen here. I mean, what makes something beyond repair with us is when the necessary pieces aren't surrendered. That's why we live with dark stuff, because we didn't. We didn't give him the light. We didn't give that piece to God. But when we give those pieces up, then the repair can take place when we repent, when we confess. It's as if we are saying to God, here, here, Lord. Here are all the pieces, right? Not just the pieces I show everybody. Here are all the broken pieces. And when God gets the pieces, He repairs what's broken. He redeems. He restores. He rebuilds. So when we confess and when we repent, we really are at that opportunity 
of giving him those pieces. And that is exactly what Peter does here. Look in verses 10 and 11. Jesus says to Simon, right, Peter, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up to shore. They left everything, and they followed him. Wow, right? I mean, they walked away from it all. The boats, the nets, and by what I'm reading here, I'm assuming what else? Fish. The fish, the big catch. They started that day off, remember? They fished all night, hadn't caught a thing. Babies are hungry, carpet, or camel payments need to be made. Uh, they, they got ripped, you know? They started off the day disappointed. They started off the day depressed. They started off the day anxious. They started off the day terribly worried as fishermen. And guess what it ended as? Going from fishermen to fishers of men. A new path. A new journey for them. Jesus turned some things around in their life. Now check this out. I want to just briefly just jump forward. And I'm, 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 I'm ending right now to the end of Jesus' ministry in John chapter 21. Now, before this chapter in John chapter 21, remember Peter in the upper room, he vowed to never forsake or leave or betray Jesus. Then you know the story. He denies Christ three times, right? And then the rooster crows. And Peter, you know, it says in Scripture, he is broken when he hears the rooster crow, and he weeps and he weeps and he weeps. Then things seemingly get worse, right? Eventually, Peter ends back up at the Sea of Galilee. And, I, you know, I guess he's just thinking, well, that didn't work out. I don't know what I'm going to do. I guess I'll go back to what I was doing before uh, my conversion with Christ. So he takes up fishing again. Now, listen to this part. He's out on the water fishing in John chapter 21. Then from the shore, way off, is this guy. They can't really make him out about who he is, but they can hear him. And the guy says, hey, fellas, how's it going? Y'all catch anything today? You know? And, you know, was, I mean, I can't believe they told the truth as fishermen, right? But, but they say, you know, no, thank, you know, maybe thanks for asking, but no, we haven't. Then this figure tells him, why don't you throw your, not, your nets on the other side of the boat? Wow. I mean, inside Peter, right then, he had to be thinking, well, that's ridiculous un unless. See, he's been here before, hasn't he? At the beginning of Jesus' ministry. That must have been very, very familiar to him. And then when the nets start to fill and when they start to stretch, they know it's Jesus. Peter can't wait. The scripture tells us he dives right in, man. He jumps out of that boat and he swims to shore to get in front of Christ as quickly as possible. And so they, they sit down and they have community and they have family together and over a meal, by the way, which you see a lot of in the New Testament, right? And then uh, uh, Jesus talks to Peter and three times he says this. He says, Peter, do you love me? And Peter's like, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And he asks him again, Peter, do you love me more than these? He says, yeah, God, do you know, Father, I love you. And he asked him a third time, you know, Peter, do you love me? He says, Lord, Lord, you know, you know that I love you. And so Jesus tells him, then feed my sheep. As the praise band comes up, I want you to hear what this really last part says. In other words, this is what Jesus is telling Peter. Your denials don't disqualify me. Your past doesn't determine your future. And this time doesn't have to be like the last time. You are not beyond repair. I just need all the pieces back. I still have a plan for you, Peter. Jesus, Jesus, right here, right now, church, he's telling us the same thing as we begin this new year. <laughs> your past, man, your past doesn't disqualify. What happened then doesn't have to determine what happens now. You are not beyond repair. Right? Let me say that again. You are not beyond repair. 
He just names off the six commandments. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord that we are not beyond repair in your eyes, God. Lord, that this challenge, just because you say so kind of life, is real, and uh, it, 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 it can happen, Father, for us, Lord. But Lord, I know, I know life, God. I know disappointment. I know hurt. I know those dark holes that I can get into, Lord, that I can't see very well, Father, what reality in your world is really like. So just right now, for a moment, God, I just, Lord, I just want to pray for people in our lives, people that may be sitting out here, people that we know, people that we love, that believe that they are beyond repair. That is a lie. Amen, church? That is a lie, God. Father, let us be the light to tell them. Let us receive and soak in that today, Lord, that we are not beyond repair. They are not beyond repair. You are the difference maker, God. So, Father, as we come to live this because you say so kind of life, Lord, let us rest. Let us rest in you, Jesus. We love you. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Y'all stand as we sing this. Let's sing this.